Hello everybody and welcome to the channel Out of Ammo Out of Time. I'm your host Krabby Terror 8 and it has been quite a bit of time. I have been out of time for a number of weeks, which I do apologize for. I really enjoy doing these videos. However, life got in the way as they say. Um, I'm never going to say uh, next week we're going to do Willy Muric because next week turned into three months. I'm, I do apologize. Uh, I uh, became very busy uh, with my work, but also um, I went overseas, um, Europe and the US, for an extended period. So I'm now back. Uh, I've been playing The Forgotten Age, and I'm back doing these videos. And very soon I'm going to have a whole slew of new investigators to add to the investigator games. Speaking of which, yes, if you're new to this channel, what is the investigator games? Well, the idea is is that each investigator, it's a bit like the Hunger Games, I suppose, something like that. Each investigator plays uh, the gathering solo. Uh, they play through it, and depending on how many um, victory points they end up with, they end up in a league table from the top of the league table down to the bottom. We've been playing through all the investigators. We've gone through um, the the, um, the, f the first investigators you get with the opening set. We then went through all of the um, Dunwich Legacy investigators and we're now working our way through the, uh, the Carcosa investigators. Um, we're nearly at the end of that and then <coughs> hopefully, I don't know if I can do this on Octagon or Tabletop Simulator or whatever, but... Um, we will move on to the um, Forgotten Age investigators and um, then perhaps the Circle Undone as well, depending on how things go. Um, once we get to the end of this, this, this uh, round in the league, there will be a winner who will be showered with Richard's riches and untold fame. Uh, and then I suppose we'll move on to... Um, to the, the next scenario in the um, opening set, um, but that's quite a way down the track. So that's how it all works. Um, and like I said, this week um, we are doing uh, doing the scenario with William Yorick. I'd also like to say thank you for all the people who subscribed and liked and commented. I was really, really humbled and gratified to see that people were subscribing even <laughs> when I wasn't posting any new videos at all. So uh, thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm sorry if I might seem a bit rusty. I've played The, the Gathering a bazillion times, but it has been a few weeks. So I'm hoping I'm not too rusty. And I've never played William Yorick before, so... Usually I've played a fair number of the investigators, but this is my first time playing William Yorick and he is a little bit different. I don't play survivors very often. I tend to play um, either purples or yellows. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun with Ursula Downs uh, during the Forgotten Age, fantastic um, seeker. But here we are with William. So let's just have a little bit of a chat about um, my meeting with William. So I met William in the green room before we started. Uh, he's um, For someone who's supposed to be someone on stage, he's not exactly what I would call the most um, effusive individual. Of course, we've had other actors uh, who are investigators, and they are much more theatrical uh, than William. William seems very understated. Um, sort of fixes you with these sort of deadpan stare and doesn't say very much. I mean, I asked him if he was um, prepared to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune of doing um, the investigator games. He just sort of hit me with this deadpan stare. I said, what's what's wrong here? Am, uh, am I some kind of rogue or peasant slave to you? He, again, he just fixed me with a deadpan stare. So I don't know what he was thinking get thee to a nunnery perhaps I'm not sure but uh, it wasn't exactly very forthcoming so um, let's just hope that uh, when he's in the study he doesn't get stabbed in the arras so <coughs> so uh, moving on so yeah he's ready to, to roll for the investigator game so a couple of things about William Yorick 
Uh, first of all, his stats, he's not the world's greatest clue getter. So that's going to be a challenge for him. And we'll look at his starter deck in a second. Uh, but he's he's good on fight and he's reasonably okay in terms of willpower and um, uh, vitality, I think it is. Is it called vitality? I'm not sure. So, uh, yes, his biggest weakness is going to be getting clues. <coughs> that is a problem in terms of, um, in the investigator games, the way that you get to the top of the league is through experience points and that, of course, is by mainly... Um, investigating the attic and the cellar and getting all of the clues and, and getting the victory points that way. Otherwise, you're relying on the <coughs> ghouls appearing that you can defeat, and that's a random draw. So that might happen, that might not happen. Who knows? So that's that does make things a little bit more difficult for William to, to get those victory points. However, he does have one advantage over the other investigators which I'll talk about in a second he's what we call a recursion deck so he he's got um, items that he he can discard for benefits and then he can bring them back from his discard pile and you can see that in his special abilities uh, if he defeats an enemy he can play an asset from his discard pile as long as he plays its cost pays its cost sorry uh, and also if he gets his elder sign he can return a card from his discard pile to his hand so um, with things like the gravedigger sho shovel for example he can um, discard that for a benefit we'll talk about in a sec and then he can bring it back to his hand so a bit of recursion going on there in that way so if we have a look at his starter hand now that's something else about the investigator games in the gathering Everybody starts with their official Fantasy Flight game starter hand. And some are uh, better than others, I think would be a way to, to say it. Uh, and in this particular case, William Yorick's starter hand is, is pretty good. It's not too bad. The biggest weakness being um, his ability to find clues. And at least we have a couple of flashlights. And also we have Look What I Found. So... I think we might be relying on those, especially in in this deck. So hopefully we will get at least a, fl a flashlight to start with, because without that he's really going to struggle even to get out of the, <laughs> the study at the beginning. So that could be quite challenging. In terms of <coughs> other cards here... Look, the starter hand has physical training and dig deep. And quite frankly, these cards are not that great because unless you've got lots of resources, um, they cost two to put down and then you have to spend resources to, to make them work. So I suppose, you know, physical training can, can help in terms of fighting and, and other things. But the problem is it's a huge resource cost. In that way, what what's more successful in this deck are some really reasonable weaponry. So the Grave Digger's Shovel is pretty good. You get plus two for the attack. You don't get plus one damage, though, but you do get plus two for the attack. And if you discard it, you can discover a clue. So that is going to be helpful, again, because he's such a poor clue getter. And because of the recursion, we can bring things back. Uh, it means it's not such a big deal if we have to throw the Grave Diffix Shovel away because hopefully we can bring it back uh, in that way. Also, evidence will help in terms of the clue getting. And then we have the baseball bat, which is pretty good. Now, usually the baseball bat's a bit rubbish compared to the fire axe because it can, um, it can break if you um, reveal a skull or the, the um, tentacle symbol. But... Um, but because you can bring things back from the discard pile, it's not such a terrible, such so onerous as it might be in other decks. Um, we also have the beat cop, so and also the guard dog, which help with um, attacking. Um, and there's a nice synergy there with the grave digger shovel dealing the one um, extra damage to an enemy. Um, so there is that. And then with recursion as well, we have resourceful, which also plays into the recursion theme. Um, successful skill test. Um, you can then um, choose a card not named resourceful, 
and add it to your chosen hand. So um, that's also a handy to bring back things like the gravedigger's shovel or indeed the baseball bat. So there's a few ways of doing that. And then as usual for things like um, survival, we've got survival instinct, which is probably going to be quite handy at the end against the ghoul priest. We've got dodge, handy against the ghoul priest. And last but not least, definitely handy against the ghoul priest, is the old vicious blow. So I'll be wanting to keep those in hand. Uh, weaknesses, we drew the stubborn detective who's a pain in the ass, but not that bad, but is a bit of a pain in the ass to get. That was a random draw. Bury them deep is um, William Yorick's um, special ability. It's an event, so basically... Um, you fast play it after a non-elite enemy is defeated. You add that enemy to your victory display with this card. So essentially a non-elite enemy gets a victory of one. So that means if we don't manage to investigate something like the attic or the cellar, we can offset that with, with this. There's also a potential that we could get ahead of the game as well if we do manage to investigate the attic and the cellar and this. But uh, I don't know. It's going to be difficult in the uh, cellar to do that. Um, effectively um so we'll we'll see how we go with with that um okay so that's that's uh that's just a bit of a rundown of Will william yorick's um deck i forgot to mention his signature weakness which is not too bad either it's basically another um enemy so it's so two enemies two weaknesses we've got stum detective and then we've got graveyard ghouls um, they're hunters, so they follow you around. You can't, uh, you can't do your recursion when you've got them around. Hell is empty, and all the devils are here. William Shakespeare, The Tempest. Um, you know they're pr they're pretty weak, so you can probably dispatch with them uh, fairly easily, or evade them if you really want to. So they're non-elite. So if you had your signature. Um, card as well you can put them in the victory display so not too bad so uh, let's close and shuffle up the deck there we go and we, here we are set out for the gathering in octagon uh, if you want to know more about using octagon uh, i always leave a link uh, in the notes for that uh, with a tutorial uh, and i've put out the study just just for sake of speed out here with with uh, two clues um, and uh, William here with his three actions ready to roll. We're down here with our um, five pieces here. So um, first thing that we'll do, I suppose, and we're ready to go on our turn one of our investigation phase, uh, I'll probably read out uh, the, the scenario uh, and then we can uh, get going. Um, so here we go. Agenda. What's going on? It's late at night, and you're holed up in your study, researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in Hamlet, uh, in the region. A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlour down the hall, and at the same time you hear dirt churning as something were digging beneath the floor. Trapped, as you leap to investigate, and indeed... We are a three agility, so we probably do leap. We leap to investigate. The door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. So there we go. <clears throat> we are trapped in the study, and we need to find a way out. There are two clues in the study, a shroud of two. Um, so all that's really left to do here is uh, get going. So let's draw our opening hand of five. Let me just shuffle this up. Shuffle up the deck. Um, and let's see how we go. We're on standard setting. Yes, we are. So let's see what five we get. Now, in terms of what I want to get, I want to get a flashlight, ideally, and also a weapon. So flashlight and weapon are the, probably the two main things I want to be able to have in hand at the beginning so we can deal with uh, researching. If we don't have the flashlight, or look what I found, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up being quite difficult. So here we go. First one, we get the Grave Digger Shovel. Grave Digger shovel, shovel, that's great. So there's a weapon. Second is the 45 automatic. Nice. So there's two weapons, two hands, two weapons. Very nice. 
Um, third is a Vicious Blow. That's great. Probably want to keep that, though, for down the track with the Ghoul Priest. Uh, scavenging. After you successfully investigate by two or more, well, the problem with that is that um, with our um, two intellect, that's 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 a tall order. But anyway, it's there. So one, two, three, four, five. And there's the flashlight. What do you know? Well, there we go. So um, that's great. Um, that's not so great, but we could use the pip, I suppose. That's good, that's good, and that's good. So we've got some good cards here. Um, I think we can get a better card than Scavenging, though. So I'm going to throw in Scavenging. I do want to keep Vicious Blow because I would hate to throw it away and then find it never comes back again. And when it comes to the Ghoul Priest, um, you, you want to be doing um, lots of damage early. So, uh, Vicious Blow is always very handy for that. So, I think I might just throw in the one and draw an extra card. And the extra card is Resourceful. So, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, so there we go. So, let's put the Scavenging back in. Shuffle up. Okay, so there we go. There's our five. Fantastic. So, I think we're ready to roll here. So I think the first thing we need to do is just set ourselves up a little bit um, with a couple of things. Um, I don't think we need the 45 automatic yet. We will need it later, um, and, it, and it has limited ammo. And usually in the early parts of the game, you don't need it unless you get a, um, a you know, an icy ghoul or something and you want to take it out for the victory points. So. I think we keep that aside, but I think the first thing we probably do, there's two things we need to do. So our first action will be to spend two and bring out the Gravedigger's Shovel. So now we're aligned with our picture. Good start, we just need the Lantern now. So that's good, we get the Gravedigger's Shovel, that's our first action. Our second action will be to pay two more. There we go, and bring out the old flashlight. So our hand slots are now taken up, so we've got no more hand slots um, at the moment. We'll put three supplies on the flashlight. There we go, three supplies on the flashlight. So that gives us minus two shroud. Now, I don't want to use the flashlight here if I can help it. It's best to keep the flashlight for the seller, but, you know, if we end up with we're not getting anywhere, then we might have to use it because it's a two versus a two at the moment so we actually may need to um so there we go there's our um there's our we've got our weapon out we've got our flashlight out so that's a good start um so i think w what i'm going to do here is i'm going to um that was our second action i'm not going to mess around with throwing any card. I don't want to throw this card in for its intellect pip because then we don't have anything in the discard pile so it would be a bit, bit of a waste. So let's leave it for now. So this is the problem with this card is if you've got nothing in the discard pile it's not it's kind of losing its main reason for being. So what we'll do here is we're just going to do a straight up um, two versus two. See how we go to get a clue. So we're going to draw from the um, Chaos bag, and um, I've actually forgotten how you draw from the chaos bag. I'm sure there's a. Where is it? Reveal token control. Ah, control S is from the chaos bag, and control E is an encounter card. There we go. I'd forgotten. It's been so many weeks. So here we go. Zero or better. Oh. <laughs> Wow, there we go. What a great start. We get a zero, which means the clue was right there at our feet with a great big neon sign going, clue, clue. William's like, aha, clues are best found when they are right at your feet. There we go. Wow, we get a clue. Brilliant. That's our three actions. There we go. So we're off, kicked off in the investigator game. Crag goes wild. First clue is gotten. 
William waves his shovel at the crowd and flashlight at the crowd. <sighs> it's all happening here today. So we had a very successful opening round. We're in the study. We got the we got the shovel out. We got the flashlight out. And amazingly, against all odds, we found the first clue. So that was a brilliant start. Nice and efficient. That's what we like. So hopefully next go we can get the second clue and we can get ourselves in the hallway and we've we're, we're on our way. Okie dokie. So let's move on to the enemy phase or the enema phase as I call it. Well there are no en enemas to speak of so we can move directly into the upkeep phase and look at that. <laughs> we get graveyard gruels and so they immediately engage us. Good job we got the shovel out. Um, back you ghouls. Here we go. Um, so <clears throat> We immediately got our weakness, and you know what? If we're going to get our weakness out, I would rather have our weakness now than, you know, we're trying to face off against the ghoul priest. So, no biggie. The biggest problem is, is that, um, you know, we've drawn that instead of drawing something more useful. So, anyway, that's going to keep us engaged next time. Okay, so there we go. That's our... And we drew our resource. So, there we go. There's our... Um, upkeep phase and so things have gone a little bit haywire already that's all right though that's that's arkham horror the card game for you okay so um let's move into the first mythos phase um we've got a doom on what's going on there's the doom and so that means it's time for everybody's favorite part of arkham horror the card game and that's where we draw from the wonderful encounter deck what does the wonderful encounter deck have for us today? And wouldn't it be lovely if it, we started with a crypt chill? Wouldn't that be a nice way to start um, in that way? Let's see what we get. So the encounter deck gives... I can't believe this. I, 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 I cannot believe this. You would think I'd scripted this up, wouldn't you? <laughs> you would have thought I'd have scripted this up and made it, but no. And here we are. Everybody's favourite encounter card. Crypt chill. Oh my goodness, I hate this card. Good job we've got two assets on the table. And actually, uh, it's not so terrible for William Yorick, Crypt chill. Crypt chill's not so bad because if we throw away the flashlight, uh, no, we can't throw it. Well, if we throw away the flashlight, we have ways of bringing it back. So if we defeat the enemy, we can play an asset from your... So we could play it... Um, Back. So, actually, even though it seems bad, it's actually not as bad as it would be for other players in the series. So, I don't feel too bad. We're, we're aiming to, to defeat these graveyard ghouls anyway. So, in that way, um, hmm, we can, um, we can um, get it back. Or we can get it back with resource. Uh, no, we can't get the flashlight back with resourceful. Sorry, we can get our grave digger, sho grave digger shovel back with resourceful. So, having said all of that, we are a three. It's a four. Um, I don't think I can commit anything anyway. So we have to get plus one or better. So, um, chaos bag says. Um, uh, tablet that's minus two if there's a ghoul enemy at your location and there is a ghoul enemy at your location take a damage ouch so william yorick actually takes a damage ouch it's a bit nasty there we go um so we failed that as we thought we might um so there we go um we uh we lose something here so we're going to lose the flashlight bye bye flashlight into the um into the uh, discard pile but that's all right because we're going to aim to get it back anyway so there we go that's quite that was quite an action-packed uh, mythos phase we um we got we got crypt chill we um because of what we drew with the tablet we took a we took some damage and we got lost the flashlight so things are um a bit dire so all right well, it's our turn. We'll put three actions um, here and we'll just forward the agenda to the investigation phase. 
So here we are at our second investigation phase in the study. There's one clue here. Um, we've got the grave digger's shovel ready to smash these ghouls around the head with. So we get two fight for this attack, we get, which gives us a fight of six versus three, which is pretty good odds, minus three or better. So the question is, do we um, commit vicious blow and kill them quickly? So my problem with that is, is that if we do that, then that means we don't have vicious blow for when the ghoul priest arrives. And just from experience, I know that um, vicious blow is incredibly helpful in getting to those five points because... Um, you can do the five points in in one ra in, in in one of your turns because you can do two uh, in one hit. Uh, and in fact, if you're using the forty five, you do three in one go, which basically means you get you dispatch the ghoul priest in a couple of turns, a couple of rounds, or a couple of turns, or whatever. So I think I think we'll try and defeat these graveyard ghouls um, one hit at a time. Um, see how we go so I think there's a reasonable chance if, if we find it's not going to happen then we've got to make a decision because they do one of each We've got reasonable health so it wouldn't be the end of the world if we took a bit more damage but you know it can pile up fairly quickly anyway so the first action is we're going to fight with the grave digger's shovel so we get plus two for the attack which means we're a 6 versus a 3, so we're looking at minus 3 or better. Chaos Bag says minus 2, so that's successful. So we do a damage to the Graveyard Ghouls. Ouch! Okay, well, there's no reason why we shouldn't do that again. So let's do that again. And, um... So we, uh... We, um, six, so it's minus three or better again. Um, yep, six, six versus three, minus three or better. Chaos Bag says zero. So that's another damage. So that's two damage now that we've, we have. So now we, uh, we, I guess we, we, that was our second go. So for our third turn, we'll do it again. Here we go. Minus three or better. Chaos Bag says, minus four. You're kidding me. <laughs> oh, nope. <laughs> oh, dear. I thought, I, thought, uh, I thought that was absolutely going to happen. That's all right. That's the luck of the draw. Thank you, Chaos Bag. Thank you so much. So uh, we, uh, we, we swung and a miss on the ghouls. However, they're, they're close to going down, so it's not the end of the world. Um, I think, we, have we got first aid in here i think we do i don't remember i hope we do anyway so there we go that's the end of our turn so the end of the turn was, was uh, all fighting great grave digger's shovel being swung left right and center at these crazy ghouls um and uh yes so we've uh, we've done two of the three points of damage required we missed on the final hit that's all right we'll uh, get them next time so uh, that's the end of our turn. Uh, we move into the uh, enema phase, and indeed this enemy does one damage, one horror. So we had a damage and a uh, horror to us. So we're down to six, six strength and uh, five sanity. That's all right. So that's the end of that round. Ghouls do a bit of damage to us. And we move on to the upkeep phase and we get emergency cash. Mm, which at the moment is, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It'd be nice to get a rabbit's foot, something like that. But anyway, that's what we got. So it's better than nothing. I mean, we've got plenty of resources at the moment. So it's not like we're starved for resources. So uh would have been nice to have drawn something else. But anyway, that's the upkeep phase. So we move into the good old mythos phase. And uh, there are now two Doom on here. So it's going to flip next time. So it will be really unfortunate if we're still in the study when this flips. That means we're really behind the eight 
eight ball if you like in terms of speed and we know that uh, I think it's now seven turns is the um, seven or eight turns I can't remember now is the um, is the record for finishing um, the gathering so uh, really is we're a little bit behind from that perspective some investigators by now were out of the study and in the attic and practically <laughs> investigated the attic by now but anyway um, okay <clears throat> so uh, let's draw from the encounter deck let's not let's hope we don't get another creature otherwise this is this is going to be very embarrassing whenever we're getting out of the bloody study here we go so uh, the uh, encounter deck has is that right? Another crit chill. That is another crit chill. Let's check the global. Yep, there's the crit chill in the discard. So this indeed is another crit chill. Two crit chills in a row. That's, you know, one's bad. Two, that's, that's a little bit rough. That is a little bit. I mean, we can bring it back, but... Ah, test four. I don't think we have an ability to... We don't. So we just have to go with it. So again, it's a plus one or better for the Crypt Chill. And uh, Chaos Bag says... Hmm? It seemed to work then. Let's try it again. Yes, zero. Which normally would be an awesome draw, but uh, in this case, not. So we fail. Um, we... We lose the Grave Digger's Shovel to another Crypt Chill. It must be very chilly in the study. Someone forgot to turn up the central heating. So that's uh, something else in the discard pile. So we've lost both of our <laughs> assets. Uh, yes, very quickly. Oh well. C'est la vie, as they say. That is Arkham Horror, the card game. Poor old William. So, yeah. So that's the end of the Mythos phase, and as we move into the good old Investigation phase, we'll put three actions on William. So we have three actions back on. So, um, very focused here. So the first thing is to defeat this Graveyard Ghoul, which if you defeat an enemy, you can play an asset from your discard pile. So that, that, that's uh, going to be very, very handy. Um, so I think we're going to want to do that I'm thinking the flashlight because we can use resourceful um, to bring uh, into your hand and in fact we might do that right now because uh, we're a four graveyard ghouls are a three so what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit resourceful to this so um, I can then add the graveyard digger shovel back to my hand. So we are now a five versus a three. I'm not going to commit vicious blow or for, uh, vicious blow to this. So it's a minus two or better. Chaos bag says skull. I think that's fine. I think it's my number of ghouls. So it's minus one. So we're successful. So a couple of things. We're successful, which means the graveyard ghouls die. They die, first of all. After you defeat an enemy, play an asset from your discard pile. Okay. so But you have to pay its cost. So I'm going to pay two. And I'm going to bring back the flashlight with three assets on it. So that's the first thing that we did. After you defeat an enemy, play an asset from your discard pile, paying its cost once per round. So we did that. Second thing is, if the skill test is successful, which it was, choose a card not named Resourceful and put that in your hand. So we can take the Gravedigger Shovel and we can put it in our hand. Um, there we go. So that was quite nifty. We got our, um, we got our um, flashlight back and that got... Um, we actually play it, play it, played it, so that we've got that back, and we've got the Grave digger, Digger's Shovel, and we can put that in our hand. So very nice. So even though we lost those to Crypt Chills, we got them back. 
So that was our first action to defeat the graveyard ghouls. Our second action, I really want to get out of the study, so even though it would be nice, nice to get the Gravedigger's shovel back out onto the table, I'm actually more keen to get out of the study uh, and get on with things. So, um, um, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to use one of my um, flashlight pieces here. So we're going to spend a supply so that makes the shroud of the study zero, which basically means as long as we don't auto fail, we um, we successful. So let's see what the chaos bug says. So we use the flashlight, shine a light in the corners, and we get uh, minus one. So um, we didn't fail. We don't take a horror because we were two. It was zero. So it's one versus zero. So we are successful. We get the clue. What? We get the clue. Um, that's great. So we got the clue. Now there's a something here, which is a little tip that somebody gave me a while ago. Is that even though you could leave the study right now, um, it's actually better to stay in the study and start the beginning of the next turn. Uh, by leaving the study and the reason for that is if we draw a creature that creature hits the study we then throw in our clues that creature gets destroyed so otherwise we'll be a fighting creature so it's actually better to wait and start the next um, our next phase um, by moving into the hallway so for our third go I think it's pretty obvious what we do I think we pay two and we bring out the grave digger's shovel it's back on so that was our three turns so there we go so um, reasonably successful round we defeated the graveyard ghouls which meant we brought the flashlight back and also because we committed resourceful it meant we could bring the grave digger's shovel back into our hand we then used the flashlight to successfully investigate the study and then with our third go, we um, brought out the Gravedigger shovel again. Both hand slots taken up. We've lost one of the supplies on the flashlight, but that's okay. We've still got two left. And even if we use them up, we can always bring it back from the graveyard again. So quite handy from that perspective. So for next go, we are ready to get into the hallway and either up to the attic or down to the cellar, depending on what we want to do. Depending on what card we might draw next round. But I'm... Um, feeling like we're now in a good place to get moving and move forward. So, um, all right, so that's the end of the investigation phase. Enemy phase, there are no enemies to speak of. So we can move directly into the upkeep phase and we get scavenging. Successfully investigate by two or more exhaust and choose an item card in your discard pile and add it to your hand. Yeah. Um, yeah, at the moment that's not particularly helpful. It kind of would be helpful, I suppose, if you used up the flashlight and then you threw away the flashlight uh, and then uh, used it that way. But at the moment, not the world's greatest card. Okay, so that's the end of our upkeep phase. We are now moving into the next round. So there's a lot going to happen in this round because it's the Mythos phase and as you can see it's gone red which means we've got our three uh, dooms which means we um, that flip, flip the card and it says Your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It is almost as if you've been transported somewhere else entirely, although every now and again you recognise elements of your former home. home. Ah yes, there's that script um, I've been looking for. Ah, there's my uh, fake Oscar that I always thought I should win. The lead investigator must decide either each investigator discards a card at random from his or her hand or takes to horror. Ooh. Well... 
we're down to five. So taking two horror is a big deal. So I think we're going to have to risk discards a card at random. I think we're going to have to risk that because I don't really want to take two horror now. These are essential and these are not. So we've got a good chance of taking out a card that we don't care about that much. Um, and again, Vicious Blow would be the worst because we can't bring that back. Whereas the 45 automatic, we could um, play an asset from the discard pile. So um, not so terrible. So actually, that's probably better than taking more horror is going to be a real problem because we've got to take some horror going into the uh, attic. And so if we did that, we would have two, three, four. We would be getting very close to going insane, and that's not good. So I think we randomly discard. So I'm just right-clicking here. Um, random discard. And the random discard is, there we go, emergency cash. Woo! So it was a 50-50 chance it was going to be something that wasn't that great. Scavenging would have been better to lose, but that's not too bad. I mean, yeah, a bit more resource would be nice, but... That's not the end of the world, so not too bad. So, Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way, and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures. Aren't shapes silhouettes? Isn't that kind of alliteration there? Shapes and silhouettes? Couldn't you just say silhouettes of strange creatures? Anyway, shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. Indeed. All right, so there we go. That's, uh, that's flipped to the next one. We've now got seven turns before things start to turn really ugly. Um, but before we get Argo, we've got to draw from the encounter deck. So the encounter deck gives us not a crypt chill, but a obscuring fog attached to your location, plus two shroud. This isn't, see, you know, th th this is actually of little consequence, of course, because the study is going to disappear very, very quickly. I might just take, remove these. There we go. So we've shrouded the study. The study was freezing cold. We got crypt chills, and now it's all foggy. But <clears throat> we've managed to find the clues that we need. So there we go. So we can move on to the um, investigation phase. We get three actions. Three actions on us. Um, yes, and there we go. So the first thing we're going to do is spend the two clues. Two clues. So this flips. You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained. Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug, rug tentatively with your shovel. To your surprise, you see a door leading out of your study rather than a grave full of ghouls. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. I always wonder where it's going to clock you in the head when it does that. The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. Put into play the set-aside hallway cellar and attic and parlour. Discard each enemy in the study. Place each investor in the hallway and remove the study from the game. So we go, wee into the hallway. Flip the hallway. Boing. There we go. Uh, study is gone. So bye-bye study. Study is gone and indeed obscuring fog has disappeared as well. Apologies for the barking in the background. There's a lot of dogs around here, including my own. And uh, every so often they get very excited, so I do apologise for the barking in the background. Uh, luckily there's nobody cutting grass today because um, sometimes you have dogs barking, you have... Um, you have uh, lawn mowers going, um, cars drive can get incredibly noisy on a Sunday. <laughs> anyway. Mm. So, here we go. Come on, William. Let's get a move on. Now, I'm not going to go down to the cellar yet because um, I would like to try and get some more assets to help us in the cellar in terms of getting the clues there. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to spend a clue and go la di da di da di da up to the cellar. Lovely. Everybody loves a cellar. Uh, up to the cellar. Did I say up to the cellar? Up to the attic. Lovely. Everybody loves an attic. Everyone loves a cellar too, but 
We're off to the attic. Okay, here we go. After you enter the attic, take a horror. <gasps> okay, we take a horror. Here we go. Some rotten decay. The bloody carcass of a malformed beast swings from a meat hook chained to the ceiling. Blood drains slowly from the carcass, dripping into a small barrel. Yep, but you know, dry-aged meat and all that. And obviously, whoever's doing this is a bit of a gourmand because they're sort of dry-aging whatever it is that they're planning to eat later. Um, always interested in what's in this attic. Seems like some paint tins uh, and also some... Uh, um, a dummy for, for preparing clothes as well. So whoever, whoever's whoever been using this attic, a bit of an all-rounder, or the people who use this attic, kind of covering all bases in terms of their interests and hobbies here, um, including being a gourmand as well. So here we are in the, um, in the attic. So this is an opportunity for us to get our first victory point. So the question is, do we use our flashlight and then try to get it back later? Or do we keep the flashlight for the cellar? At the moment, I'm feeling because it's only a shroud of one and we are uh, intellect of two, it might be good to um, it might be good to just go ahead and do an investigation and see how we go. If we don't, then we might throw in the scavenging as well. Well, that's an asset, isn't it? Ah, oh, I'm thinking you throw it away. No, no, no. Ah, oh, jeez. Hmm. So what I might do, actually... Hmm. Hmm. Yes, I'm going to spend one, and I'm going to bring out scavenging. Oh, I thought it was like a... I didn't realise it was an asset. So that we've got it there. Um, so that was an extra turn. So there we go. So now we've got scavenging out. We've got the grave digger shovel out. Discard the grave digger shovel. Discover a clue at your location. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put the clues on here, didn't I? There we go. So we can do that as well. We can discard the grave digger shovel, and then um, we can bring it back using scavenging. So actually, I realise this is a better car than I thought it was before. Uh, yeah, oh, never mind. Okay, so for our third turn. I think we just go ahead and we just investigate. So it's a one versus a two. So it's a minus one or better. Chaos bag says minus one or better. So we successfully investigate. Yay. There we go. So we got our clue. All right. So there we go. We didn't do we didn't do two or more. So we didn't we didn't get it by two or more. So we can't do that. Not that we have any items in our um here anyway so not that we could bring anything back but there you go so there we go in that round we got out of the study we got to the hallway we moved up to the um, attic we brought out scavenging and uh, we successfully got a clue so we're, we're we're moving ahead not as fast as I would like but we are moving ahead sorry I should have deleted this and we are the barrier Apologies. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlour. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you back to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar attic that can help. Hmm. So when the round ends, investigators in the hallway may as a group spend the requisite number of clues to advance and bring on the ghoul priest. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, basha. So, yeah. So we've got reasonable time to do all of that so that was our third turn okay so i think we're done everything's in order uh sorry about this path marker here for some weird reason it flips around i've never understood why so i just leave it okay so the enemy phase there are no enemies to speak of mm -hmm. So we move into the upkeep phase and we get another grave digger shovel. Well, this is good because um, we could, uh, particularly for the cellar, we can throw away a shovel, bring in another shovel if we need to. We also need to start thinking about um, saving up our resources because um, we're going to need those resources to bring out the uh, 45 automatic at some stage to fight the ghoul priest, but not right now. Um, yeah, 
Okay, so uh, that's the upkeep phase. So we move into the mythos phase, the first doom on the old rise of the ghouls. And it is now time for the encounter deck. What do we reckon this time? Ah, uh, what's the one that puts an extra doom? I can't remember what it's called again. I reckon it's that one. Anyway, let's see how we go. So encounter deck gives us, no, nope. dissonant voices. Dissonant voices still lives. Okay, so we bring out dissonant voices into our threat area. You can't play assets or events. Oh, man. At the end of the round, discard. Well, we've already got lots of assets and things. So we can't play the Gravedigger Shovel or the 45 Automatic this round anyway. So not a big deal, really. Yeah, it's not going to stop us from doing what we need to do. So there we go. That's the end of the Mythos phase. We move into the Investigation phase. We put three actions on William. William. I keep thinking, every time I say William, I think of that song by Morrissey. William, it was really nothing. William, William, it was really nothing. Yeah, I keep thinking that, but anyway, we'll see whether it's nothing for this William. Anyway, so here we are in the attic. We've got three actions. I think what we need to do is clear. <laughs> we need to um, get this clue. So I'm going to try and get the clue without using the flashlight or throwing away our grave. We could throw away our grave digger shovel if we needed to, because we'll probably get it back. But let's see if we can get... The final clue here without that. So we need a minus one or better um, because we are a two. It's a shroud of one. So first action, chaos bag says minus three. So that didn't work. Let's try again. Chaos bag says minus one. There we go. We did it. Now we didn't do it better than two, So, but we did it. Yay! We'll put a, um, a damage on here. Just sh uh, not a doom. I do that all the time. A damage. So we'll put a damage on here to show that we have that in the victory display. Yay! Crag goes wild. <sighs> so um, so that was two of our turns. So we've got a third turn. Well, the obvious thing to do um, is to move to the hallway. Okay, and then we're ready to go down to the good old cellar where things are going to get much tougher. At the end of the round, discard dissonant voices. Okay, so there we go. So at the end, so what we did was pretty easy. We spent a couple of goes investigating the attic. We got the second clue, and now we're off to the cellar, and we're just sitting and chilling, chilling in the hallway. There we go. So um, that's that's our go. Okay. Yes. All right. Enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of. So um, we'll move straight into the upkeep phase. Upkeep phase, we get our fantastic survival instinct. This can be handy. Um, evading immediately disengage and move to a connecting location. This is particularly handy if you want to go and parley with Lita Chandler. I probably, unless I have lots and lots of intellect pips hanging around, that's not probably going to happen because she's a four, I think, to parley, and we're a two. So we would need at least, I'd say, four intellect pips to even try that. So this is more probably to just get us out of a bit of a bind if we need to bring out more assets, so we want to disengage, move, bring out more assets, something like that. Um, otherwise, um, we, we possibly won't use it, but it's still very handy to have. Okay, great. All right, so that's the end of the upkeep phase. We move into the next mythos phase. And there are now two the Rise of the Ghouls, so we've still got five to go, still a bit of time. That's good. And let's see what the encounter deck has for us. The encounter deck gives us a lovely... <laughs> oh, I forgot to take this out, sorry. <laughs> rats. A swarm of rats. There we go. A good old swarm of rats. Yeah, we'll be able to deal with them pretty, pretty damn quick. 
Um, we don't have any... No, we don't have any... Um, we don't have any anything in our discard pile, so... Oh well. So, um, hmm, never mind. All right, so, um, yep, that's the, that's the good old rats. So we uh, move into the investigation phase. We put three actions on William. And the first action, of course, is to um, swack these rats with the gravedigger shovel. So we're talking about a four plus two is a six. Six versus a one. Let's have a go. Let's see how we go. Um, Chaos Bag says minus one. So we successfully kill the rats. There we go. Goodbye, rats. So that's the rats dispatched. Then we move into the cellar. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Second action. Flip it. There we go. Two clues. Shroud of four. After you enter the cellar, take a damage. Ouch. We trip on our shovel as we're going down. Our cheek slides all the way down the ballot banister. Uh, yeah, we get a nasty gash. So that's actually three damage now. So we've got five. So we've taken a bit of damage. And I just realized um, it's been really unfortunate, but we've had no allies. So where's our beat cop? Where's our guard dog? Where are they when we need them? Thanks a lot, guys. So there we go. Anyway, so we're here in the cellar. So we killed the rats. We moved down to the cellar. And now this is where we need to do some things. So um, so a couple of things. We could literally get rid of our gravedigger shovel and discover a clue, which would be handy. The only problem with that is, is then if we get a creature, an icy ghoul or something, we've got no weaponry at all. So I'm probably loath to do that right now and probably more thinking about the flashlight so why don't we do that why don't we use our final action um, we use another resource on our flashlight so that brings the cellar down to two we are also two so it's not not the best but it's better than a kick in the pants so two versus two so a zero or better Let's see how we go in the cellar. Chaos Bag says minus four. No chance. No chance. Still dizzy from, from falling down the stairs. Don't find anything. So we might need to be doing some grave digger shoveling, throwing away. That might be actually what we, what we end up doing. Throwing away both grave digger shovels or something. We'll see how we go. So at the end of the round, we got rid of the rats, we moved into the cellar, we took the damage, and then we unsuccessfully investigated. That's all right. Okay, we're, we're moving forward, we're moving forward. So that's the end of that round. The uh, enema phase. We've been pretty lucky, actually. We haven't had many enemies, actually. Um, and we haven't had any allies. So there we go. Enemy phase, no enemies. We then go into the upkeep phase, and we get another flashlight. Well, that's good. That's something. Got two flashlights. That's That's very handy. Uh, and we've got three resources, so, you know, we're building up our resources so we can bring out the 45 automatic, which we will need for the ghoul priest. And hopefully we can avoid using that for other things because we'll easily dispatch the ghoul priest with hopefully the 45 and vicious blow all in one go. Um, yes. Okay. So we move into the next Mythos phase. So this is the turn seven Mythos phase. I can see now that William is not going to break the record um, in terms of speed, but that's all right. Um, you know, he can still finish and be respectably somewhere in the middle of the league table. Um, so uh, it's still possible he might end up with extra victory points if his um, signature skill comes through. That's also possible. But, well, you know, it's all dependent on what gets drawn. So there we go. So we're up to th th um, three Doom now on here. So we've still got four to go, so we're not quite halfway there. So not too bad. Let's try to see what the Encounter deck has for us. Encounter deck has... Oh, you're kidding me. You are kidding me. No. No. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, let me send it to the back a bit. So, yeah, this now gives this a six shroud. This is always the worst outcome. 
Well, the seller six shroud successfully investigated. Okay, I'll just send it to the back. Uh, send to back. There we go. So now this is now a six, which makes it for William pretty impossible without throwing away. So the only way we're going to get these is by literally discarding, discard, discarding it, which is not a successful investigation. Um, so it doesn't get rid of this because you have to successfully investigate it, but it means we can get them. So that's what we're going to need to do. So the flashlights are pretty useless. So then really the only thing you can do with the flashlight now I mean, you could have dueling flashlights, I suppose. You could have two flashlights in two hands and sort of... Yeah, but is the pips could be used to um, for, for leader Chandler. Anyway. Okay, so that's really focused the mind. That's one of the things. Sometimes in Arkham Horror, you get to a place where your options get very limited, and I think we're in that place now. So... Okay, investigation phase. All right, well, there's no point... Uh, put the three actions on here. One, two, three. Okay, well, we might as well just do it. So here we go. First action, discard the grave div diggish shovel. Discover a clue. There we go. So we've got all the clues we need. So technically we could leave now, but um, we want the victory points because this is the investigator games. Now, if we weren't playing the investigator games, we'd probably bugger off and, and, and get ready for the ghoul priest. However, this is the investigator games. So in that way, we are going to um, we are going to pay two. Oh, did I just remove a clue? Whoops! Oops! I'm removing clues. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why it's not one, two. There we go. And we bring out the grave digger shovel. That's our second go. Now, do we take the risk? and get rid of the grave digger shovel and then um, there's a risk that you know the icy ghoul might appear or something and we're not really but we can always I suppose survival instinct um, yeah out of there I suppose or do we just move and come no because then we take damage let's take the risk so for our last action we throw away another grave digger shovel and discover another clue for the location. So we got all of the clues, and therefore we get the victory. Cloud, crowd goes wild. <sighs> so there we go. We got all of them by throwing away. Somehow by throwing away a grave digger shovel, it obviously hit something, and you get the clue. So there we go. There's a... Oh! Whoa! 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 Sorry. Whoa! Oh dear. That's weird. Sorry guys. I've hit the mouse and I'm... Ugh. There we go. <laughs> that was, I just... Yeah, I didn't realise you could do that. But there we go. Zoom option on Octagon. Okay, so at the end of that round we... Basically we... Um, discarded the grave, digger sho grave digger's shovel got a clue we then spent two to get another grave digger shovel and then we discarded that so we got the two clues okay that's the end of our go so we really need to get more resources now because um we're going to need them um for the 45 automatic so that's the end of our turn um and we move on to the enemy phase there are no enemies so we move on to the upkeep phase Ah, now the guard dog. Now the guard dog's here. So that would also be a nice nice combo to have. The guard dog and the 45 automatic, which means the ghoul priest would be very easy to deal with. Okay, so that's the upkeep phase. We move into the mythos phase. We're now on four of Rise of the Ghouls. Uh, let's see what the encounter deck has for us. And the encounter deck has rats. Rats. Actually, that's not too bad because we can use the rats to um, bring back a uh, shovel. So that's sort of handy. Yeah, that's handy. 
in that way. So there we go, there's the rats. So we didn't get icy ghouls and things, but we got the rats. Okay, so it's our turn. We'll put three actions on Willigan. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is um, we don't have a weapon, so it's going to be a straight up four versus one, so it's a minus three or better. So we fight. Chaos Bag says zero successful. So the rats are dispatched. Doing. Uh, and because we successfully defeated an enemy, play an asset from your discard pile. Hmm. Do we want to? Because I'm thinking I don't want to play. Actually, I'm thinking I don't want to spend the two because we've got all of the clues and we need, we actually need, um, hmm. So I'm actually thinking not. Yeah, I'm actually thinking not. So what we'll do instead, we won't do that, is we will now move out of the cellar move this down here. We'll move out of the cellar. Um, because, you know, if something like an icy ghoul pops up, it's unlikely, but if it did, I'd rather not be in the cellar just at that time. And we've got two resources here, so for my final act, I'm going to get a resource. So we now we've got three resources. So we're building up resources because we're going to need some resources to bring out the guard dog, 45 automatic, because we need to get ourselves ready for the ghoul priest. So at the end of that round, we got rid of the, the rats. We decided not to get the gravedigger shovel because I don't want to spend the money. Because whilst you can bring something back, um, you've, you've got to pay its cost, and I want to do that. We then moved back to the hallway, and we got a resource instead. So that's the end of our turn. Um, enemy phase. Nope, there are no enemies to speak of. So we move into our upkeep. We're building up quite a nice lantern. Minus shroud, discard lantern, deal damage to an enemy at your location. So that, that could be rather handy, and in fact much more handy now than the flashlight, I guess. Um, so, but that's also two assets. So we're problem is we're facing this situation where we don't have enough assets to pay it, play everything because the 45 on the four, guard dog is three, lantern is two. So um, four, seven, eight, nine, so that's another five assets. So that's going to take some time to build up. Yeah. And Ghoul Priest has Retaliate, so the Guard Dog is helpful, so if we do get a failed hit, the Guard Dog can take some of that hit for us, because we're already on, already a bit low in terms of our health, so we need, we do need to, ideally it would be good to have all these three in place. Okay, so that's the end of um, the upkeep phase. We move into the Mythos phase, there's now five here, so we're... Um, getting close so it's usually best to try and engage the ghoul priest before this flips because what happens is you end up getting swarmed by um, ghouls and things we don't really want that to happen so um, we've got five we've got this round we've got six and then we're flipping assuming we don't get um, an encounter card that drives that a bit faster Okay, so let's see indeed what the encounter deck has. And the encounter deck gives us uh, rrr, rotting rrr, remains. Okay, rotting remains. Yeah, test three for each point you fail by take a horror. <gasps> this could be potentially very nasty because we've got no we've got no willpower plays here at all. We are a three. And it's a three, so basically, this could be this could really 
Um, I mean, the worst we can do is take three, but that would get us to five. So that's getting us very close to going loopy. So uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. Chaos Bag says, Skull. Minus one is the number of ghoul enemies. That was a really good call. There are no ghoul enemies, so we're fine. Thank goodness. Phew. Whew, that could have been very nasty. Whew. Okay, we dodged that bullet. That's good. Okay. So we move into the um, investigation phase. We put three actions. Now really, what we're doing now is really setting ourselves up for the ghoul priest. That's really what we've got to do now. So we've got four assets on here. So I think the first thing we do is we spend three, four, sorry. Three, four. Uh, oh, we don't need this flashlight, so I'll chuck the flashlight and bring out 45 automatic. We just don't need the flashlight now. Um, so that's one hand slot with four ammo on it. So that's the first thing that we do. Did I spend three or four? One resource, one resource, one resource. No, only three. So I missed the fourth resource. I thought so. So there's the four resources. Okay. Um, so that was our first action. Um, two more actions, two resources. Let me get the guard dog. So what we'll do is, as long as we just don't get, um, uh, if it does, it does. If the encamp if the if the agenda deck moves forward, it does. But what we'll look to do is um, bring out the guard dog next time, and then I think we're. I think it's time to give the ghoul priest a, a bit of a go because um, I'd like to avoid um, moving into the next phase because um, you spawn a ghoul, could be any ghoul, and then those ghouls start moving. So um, I think if we had our signature card, we might think about it because then we can get an extra victory point. Otherwise, it, it's just, you know, if we get... If we get the ravenous ghoul, for example, it's just wasting time and effort and energy that we just don't have. So probably best not to. All right. Okay, so that was the investigation phase, yeah, because we, we drew two assets. So that's all our actions gone. Move into the enemy phase. There are no enemies. It's been pretty enemy light so far. And we get dig deep, <coughs> which... Um, yeah, there's no way we're playing this. The only help of Dig Deep is uh, for its pip cards, which might be useful for evasion or for willpower tests. That's really all it's used for. So we'll see how we go. How many cards? Two, three, four, five, six cards. Okay. All right. We're well, getting to the pointy end of this um, scenario now. Move into turn 10. There are now six on here, so we're one away from this flipping. And it's now time for another encounter card. And the encounter card we get is... Oh, you're kidding me. Another Rotting Remains. This is... Yeah, yeah, it's not the same one. Oh, goodness. This is another Rotting Remains. This is a test three for each point you fail by take a horror. We do have Dig Deep, so we can commit Dig Deep. But that's all. So that gives us a, a four willpower versus a three. So we're a minus one or better. Chaos Bag says, was that a skull or did it not work? No, it didn't work. Chaos Bag says, plus one. Wow, there we go. Well, if it had been a skull anyway, it would have been fine as well. But anyway, so we didn't need that. But okay, so dig deep is fine. We avoided, we avoided once again taking horror. So that's good. So um, there we go. So we're moving into the investigation phase. Now the thing here is when the round ends. So we, this is our last opportunity to get ourselves ready. Because I really... Um, mm, so when the round ends... Actually when the round ends means we could end up with the ghoul priest and something else. But you know what? The other thing would just stand there while we shoot the ghoul priest, so it's no big biggie. So what we're going to do now is um, we've got three 
Oh, I've done it again. Sorry. Right, what I'm going to do first of all, first action, is to pay three. One, two, three. Bring out the Jard dog. There we go, the guard dog's there. Yep. So that's a. F Didn't I only do two again? One resource, two resource. And I got rid of a clue marker instead. Oh, good job there's this thing here. So it should have been that that I got rid of. There we go. Okay. I should have four clue markers here because I got all of the clues here, which are two, and all of the clues here. So I should have four clue markers. Not that it really matters as long as we've got the three. It doesn't actually matter. Um, okay. So we've got the guard dog out. We've got the 45 automatic out. Great. Um, so we've got two more turns left. So we could get two resources, but then that doesn't really help. So I think we spend two turns drawing cards, because we might get some more helpful cards. One, leather coat. Hmm. Actually, instead of drawing a second card, I think we will bring out the leather coat, just as a bit of extra defense. Um, so yes, I said I was going to draw two cards, but I drew one card and then I played the leather. I realized as I did it, I thought, well, maybe I should do that one at a time, because I might draw something I want. And yes, the leather coat's not bad, it's just another way to soak up some, some damage. So there we go. I think we're ready for the ghoul priest now. We've got the leather coat, we've got the guard dog, and we've got the 45 automatic ready to go so I think we're we've got vicious blow down here uh, so I'm hoping um, that's enough for us to finish off the ghoul priest um, yeah let's see how we go it's a little bit of a risk because the ghoul priest is a four. We are a four. Um, this gives us a five. This gives us a six, but I don't think we have any other fight things. So hopefully we'll get some more fighting pips maybe in the upkeep phase. So I'm not sure if drawing the leather coat or we should have drawn more cards. Yes. Well, that's what we decided to do. So let's move forward. Um, enemy phase, there are no enemies to speak of. So we move into the... Uh, yeah, there we go. Look what I found. So actually, two, three, four. We've actually got plus four, six. So actually, um, what we could do is we could actually look at engaging <laughs> Leader Chandler and see if we can parley here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and kill the Ghoul Priest. If we find we we do three points and then we don't, then I think we evade him a move. Um, and then look to parley um, with Leader Chandler or something like that. So uh, we, we do the three points. We move to the parlor maybe. And then we, we have a go. Because we are... You'd need four or better. That's a two, three, four, five, six. So that would be a six versus a four. Yeah, Ghoul Priest though has got a four evasion and we've got three. So the evasion's looking a little bit unlikely. So maybe not. Maybe that's more of a desperate thing. No. Okay. All right. So that's the end of the upkeep phase. Before we move into the next phase, I nearly did it. So I'm just thinking, is it worth... Is it worth waiting? Or not? Because we've waited this long. Is it worth waiting and getting some more cards? You know what? It might be worth waiting. But then again, if we get a ravenous ghoul or something, we're going to have to deal with the ravenous ghoul and then we'll be in even worse position. So it's okay if it's, yeah, I'm thinking we, yeah, I think we do it. 
because otherwise we, we could end up like dealing with something and then um, yeah finding that that takes up a lot of our resources so I think we're going to risk it for a biscuit with um, with um, William and we're going to we're going to activate the ghoul priest because we've got a bit of soak up here and that would deal damage to an attacking enemy as well so actually I think I think we're fine I think we're fine. Okay, so let's spend one, two, three. We spend three. We uh, flip this, and it says, Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice and then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking the passage to the parlor has vanished. Reveal the parlor. Boink. Uh, there's the parlor. Um, put set aside Lita Chandler in the pilot. Oh, hello, it's Lita. Oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Where have you been? I've been very bored. So, um, when an investigator at your location attacks a monster, and right, okay, so you can seek to uh, resign. So, actually, it might, you know, one of the things we could do is we could try and get into the parlor and resign if we need to, or we can parley. Um, okay, so that's the first thing we do. And spawn the ghoul priest in the hallway. Ha! You're going down. You're gonna die. Ha ha ha! Okay. So, what have you done? A woman in with a torch stands in your parlor. A glimmer of hatred in your your her, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. There we go. The ghoul priest. If you defeat the ghoul priest, advance. There we go. Four, five, four. Ghoul priest. Nice. Okay. There we go. All right. So. Okay, so we've got seven doom on Rise of the Ghouls, which means that also flips over. So it's all happening now. Oh. The mouse seems to have decided to not work. Hello, mouse. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'll be this will be. Oh. Oh, there we go, it's back. Okay, we'll flip this. All right. A feral beast, roughly humanoid, with a canine cast and hooves for feet, tears through the ground in front of you. Below the floor, you can see vast tunnels beneath your house. Fiendish howling echoes from deep within the underground caverns. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Discards ca discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a ghoul enemy is discarded. The lead investigator draws that enemy. Okay, so let's. Um, oh dear, my uh, my mouse seems to have. Oh, oh, jeez, sorry. Oh my goodness. Not only that, we seem to have... <sighs> reset screen position. Ah! There's actually a thing. Re reset, reset screen position F10. Ah, oh, I finally had that. That was before. Right. So, we'll go to the... Um, we'll shuffle this back in. Shuffle into the encounter deck. Shuffle all cards from discard pile into the encounter deck. Yes. We'll shuffle the encounter deck again. Yes, so we'll start revealing cards now and see where we get to. So we'll start revealing cards from the encounter deck and we get, let's click on that and we get Flesh Eater, Spawns in the Attic. Wow, there we go. That was that was a turn up for the books. Bit late though. Um, so just go lead in better, go drills that enemy. So there's a Flesh Eater in the uh, attic, which would be really cool 
if we could manage to kill it and the ghoul priest, but that would mean uh, evading the ghoul priest, moving to the attic, killing the <laughs> flesh eater, and yeah, it just... I, really don't think we can do all of that. If we had Leader Chandler on board, it's possible maybe, but just... Uh, you hear a crazed howl outside and suddenly all the creatures turn their attention to that sound. They rush to escape the house, breaking down doors and clawing at everything in their way. At the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged ghoul enemy moves one location towards the parlor. At the end of the round, place one doom on this agenda for each ghoul enemy. Yeah, so the Flesh Eater will start moving towards here um so i mean it would be awesome to get that as an extra victory but i think just defeating the ghoul priest is challenge enough at this stage now that's all very exciting but it's easy to forget that now that we've done all of that we still have to draw from the encounter deck <laughs> yes so the encounter deck we also get a crypt chill which is no big deal because we can get rid of, like, good job we've got the scavenging there. So test four, if you fail, choose and discard an asset you control. Okay, so um, we're basically are looking at plus one or better. Plus one or better. Chaos Bag says skull, fail, because number of ghoul enemies is a ghoul enemy, so it's a minus one. So... Uh, yeah, we get rid of scavenging. So scavenging actually turned out to be actually quite good because it, it was the sacrifice for the Crypt Chill. We've had a lot of Crypt Chill in this game. Okay, so that's the end of the Mythos phase. Whew. Right, so very, very exciting Mythos phase. All kinds of things happened. We had uh, Flesh Eaters um, appearing. We've got the Ghoul Priest on board. Leader Chandler's over in the parlour. And here are we... Uh, with three actions here in the hallway with the ghoul priest. So we've got a few options here. We could try, if we wanted to, we could try and evade the ghoul priest, which would be a four versus a four, which is likely to not succeed, and then we could disengage and move to the parlour. I feel like this is a desperate act if we find we've got flesh eaters and we've got too many things on us and if we don't move we're going to die. So I think we keep that in hand if we really need to and then we could desperately try and parley or resign would be the other thing. In fact, the other thing we could do is we could literally move into the parlour, take an attack of opportunity and resign, but I don't feel like we need to do that just at the moment. I think we can give this a red hot go. So I think the first thing we do is we actually try and kill this ghoul priest. Hopefully, we will. So here we go. So what we're going to do first is we are going to um, hit the ghoul priest with some ammo. So we're going to fire at the ghoul priest with our first action. That gives us a plus one fight. So that makes us a fight of five versus four and we're going to throw in the vicious blow so that gives us a six versus a four so that's a minus two or better and if we succeed we do three points of damage because we get plus one for the 45 automatic we get plus one for the vicious blow and we get one anyway so we would do three points of damage in one hit so let's see how we go so basically we are a Four, five, six versus four, minus two or better. Chaos bag says minus two. <sighs> we did it. Fantastic. So that means we do three points of damage to the ghoul priest. Ow! So that's a really good start. So, okay. So I think what we do now is we plug the ghoul priest. If we don't get the four versus the five, he'll retaliate. But if the guard dog gets hit, then that's a point of damage. So I think if we can manage this, we might be able to do it. So let's go. We've only got to do two more points of damage. For our second turn, we will fi we'll fire at the ghoul priest again. This time it's a plus one fight. So that gives us a five versus four. So we're looking at a minus one or better from the chaos bag. Chaos Bag gives us a tablet. Minus two, if there's a ghoul enemy at your location, take a damage. So we failed. 
we failed. So that means he didn't take a damage. He hits us for two and two. So um, I'm going to put one damage on the leather coat. I'm going to put one damage on the guard dog. When an enemy attack deals one damage to guard dog, that deal one damage to the attacking enemy. So he gets an enemy. So that's the two. And then we will take the two um, um, horror. Okay, so we're for horror. Um, we've leather coat. And then on top of that, there's an extra damage because it was a tablet. So what we do is we get rid of the leather coat. So the leather coat has gone. So there we go. That was quite a nasty, <laughs> nasty round. But he's one away from dying. So all we need to do now is survive the next phase. And um, I think we're fine. So we'll do it again. So we'll do it again. We'll fire at the ghoul priest again. So it's again a five versus a four, a minus one or better. Chaos Bag says, oh, fail. So the ghoul piece priest assigns two horror and two damage. So that means um, we already have one damage, so we can assign another uh, one damage and one horror to the one damage and one horror to the guard dog, which, and we assign... One damage, one horror. One damage and one horror to us. One damage, one horror. And that means the guard dog dies, but because there was another damage, it deals damage to the attacking enemy, which means that the uh, ghoul priest takes another damage. Guard dog dies. Ghoul priest dies. Ah! And we survive. <laughs> oh! Wow, what a way to go. Thank goodness for the guard dog. That that um, Those retaliations made all the difference because we were able to um, do three points in the first instance and then we failed twice and because we had the leather coat, we were able to assign the damage uh, and every time the enemy attack dealt damage to the guard dog, we were able to deal one damage back, which meant that we were able to survive, kill the ghoul priest in the process, turn 11. So what did we end up with? Two, three. We ended up with the four victory points. We didn't get our um, signature asset, which would allow, have allowed us to, say, assign it to the rats or something for an extra victory point. So all in all, um, a pretty good round for William Yorick. He hasn't done it the fastest. He didn't die in the process either. And a very respectable outcome for William in the uh, investigator games. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, and comment. You'll see after this video, you'll see the league table, and you'll be able to see who's at the top, who's at the bottom, and where William eventually nets out. Uh, next week, Akachi uh, gets a Guernsey at the investigator games and we will see how she goes um, dealing spells I, I do like playing um, mystics so I'm very much looking forward to that as well um, so again thank you very much um, and I will see you next time hopefully next week but I'll say next time until then I'm Krabby Terror 8 thank you and goodbye <laughs>